Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vasker here with Practical Painting. We are professional painters here to help DIYers become better painters. However, sometimes you might not actually want to tackle that project yourself, and that's what this video is all about. I'm going to give you my top five reasons that you may actually want to hire a professional so that you don't ruin your whole situation. Also, at the end of the video, I will give you some tips on how to go about hiring a good painter for whatever project you're looking to do. So let's get to it. Let's start with number one, which is if you have just completed an expensive renovation. Uh, if you've just had something renovated like a kitchen or a bath where the material cost is very high, you have a lot of high-end stuff in there like cabinets and countertops and floors and all that good stuff, uh, chances are you have spent tens of thousands of dollars doing that. Uh, if you check out this bathroom that I just did a couple weeks ago, uh, even something like this is going to cost between uh, twenty-five and $40,000 for the renovation uh, to then try and do that work yourself where the potential to mess up all of the things that are in that room uh, with splattering paint on it, things like that. It's just not a good idea. If you spent all that money um, on the cabinets and all those expensive materials, you might as well get the renovation all the way across the line and have a professional paint job as well. Number two is if you have some work to do that is sketchopotamus. And what I mean by that is if you have some potentially sketchy or dangerous work that you are looking to do. Um, for most people, that would be work that's really high up. So if you have an exterior and you're up two or three stories and you're not used to being on ladders, that is uh, can be potentially a bad situation um, where if you're not used to being up on a ladder and not just being up on a ladder, but also painting up on a ladder, which is a whole other bag of tricks in and of itself, um, you may want to bring in a professional that does that all the time. And uh, also, if you can also have sketchy work that's inside, uh, particularly in big foyers. So if you have a two-story foyer and you've got to launch ladders off of stairs and use levelers and things like that, uh, then that can also be a little sketchy and you could potentially hurt yourself if you're not used to uh, being up on scaffold or high ladders at weird angles and things like that. Um, so I would uh, recommend that uh, it's also a good opportunity to look to hire someone because uh, we do those foyers all the time. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do, but we do them. And number three is if you have a serious time crunch. A common example is when people buy a new house or new to them and they want to get it painted before they move in. Um, and uh, sometimes they will try and do all the painting themselves. It's, it's super common, sometimes they can pull it off, but a lot of times there's so much logistics going on uh, with moving, particularly if you're moving from you know an old house that has a whole bunch of stuff in it into your new space. There's just a lot of logistics, and uh, generally the time crunch gets to be a little bit sticky. So my advice for that scenario, because I've been on that side a bunch of times uh, where they're hiring us or trying to hire us last minute, uh, is, as soon as you know you're closing, uh, book your painter, get your colors, and be ready to rip as soon as uh, that closes and you can get everybody in there and get the painting done. The fourth thing you need to consider is do you have the equipment needed to actually complete your project? If you're looking at uh, the material costs and the overall cost of the job, even if you're doing the labor, something to consider is do you have all the gear you need to do the job? Uh, particularly on exterior work is do you have the ladders... Uh, the picks, the scaffold, all of that stuff. Are you considering using a sprayer? If so, do you have a sprayer? Are you going to rent one? Uh, and all of that type of thing. With all those rental costs can really add up, particularly if you uh, can't get the work done in, say, like a weekend, and you've got to you know rent something multiple times or over a longer time span. Uh, that stuff can really add up. Uh, and then if you're planning on buying something like that, then do you have the storage capacity to house... Uh, the bigger ladders, the sprayer, the scat, all that kind of stuff. So uh, sometimes it can just be more effective and efficient to hire a professional painter that has all that equipment, knows how to use it, works with it all the time, and then they can just come in and do the work for you and you don't have to worry about it. And the fifth and final thing to consider uh, whether or not you should bring in a professional is, is this project actually a good use of your time? Uh, that, that's going to be a question that you have to answer for yourself. It's really related to how much time can you give to the project and then how much is your time actually worth. Uh, I can't answer that for you, but just something to consider. If you had, you know, even a standard bedroom uh, can take to do it really well and at a like a high high end professional kind of level is going to take between 16 and 24 hours to do uh, for a professional. So, uh, you know, two days is not uh, abnormal to spend in that 
kind of room depending on the size and blah 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 but like two coats on everything closets all that jazz uh so you know do you have an extra 16 to 24 hours in your week to give to that and the other thing to consider is could you make more money uh, and then set that aside doing whatever it is you do professionally. So can you take on some side work? Can you get some overtime, anything like that? Sock some money away and then bring in a professional. Uh, that way you're not going to ruin your weekend and it's probably easier for you to make money doing whatever it is that you do to then pay a professional to do whatever it is that they do, like painting. All right, so you've watched this video and perhaps you have decided that indeed you want to hire a painter. How do you go about doing that? Uh, one of the easiest ways is to uh, talk to your family and friends, maybe some uh, neighbors in your area, and see if they've had any professional work done from painters that they liked. Word of mouth is one of the easiest ways to get somebody good. That's how our name got spread around a lot. It was pretty much all word of mouth. But if you don't have access to that or you're new to the area, I would highly recommend calling either your Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore store. Uh, and talk to the manager, someone that's worked there a while. Uh, generally, those dudes know uh, who is a good painter in the area, who's still working and uh, is current with everything. So uh, then I would ask for three recommendations and also let them know what kind of work you're looking to get done. This is not an uncommon thing for them to deal with, so they're going to have probably their kind of uh, top list of folks that they're going to give out. That's how I would kind of weed things out. Generally, those stores are going to have good recommendations for you and will steer you in a positive direction. Now, if you are having the work done uh, by someone else or you've decided to do it yourself, uh, either way, you're going to need to pick some colors. So I would highly recommend taking a look at my how to pick paint colors video, which I will link to at the end of this one. And until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Fruits of a labor What I have I built with my own hands Amazing!